Howdy there neighbors, Ian with the trailer here. Today we're going to be looking at the Eco Hitch on our 2018 Tesla Model 3. Let's get into a couple features and then that install. Now our 2 inch by 2 inch receiver here is going to boast 2,000 pounds towing capacity and 300 on the tongue weight. Of course you would want to check the vehicle manufacturer specs to make sure that your Tesla numbers are not less than that and if they are go with the lower number. And biggest feature here of our Eco Hitch is going to be the removable shank. So if you didn't want this visual appeal that we've got at the moment with the hitch uh, shank hanging out, it is removable. It's just a single bolt that we would take out to get this off of here. And then there actually is a cover that's made specifically for the 2018 Model 3s that will just go right where that hitch was sitting. And a couple measurements to factor in while we're looking at this from the center of the hitch pin hole here down to the edge of our bumper. We're looking at three inches. Important to keep in mind. That way, if you have a folding accessory, that'll give you an idea of where that would sit uh, for clearance purposes. And then from the top of the shank hole here down to the ground, we are looking at 10 inches. So that'll give you an idea of the clearance uh, with your accessory in. And then this is going to accept a 5 8 pin here, not included with the kit, so please do look at our options on eTrailer.com, including nice locking options to keep your items secured. And one complaint I do have about these is the safety chain loops. They are definitely recessed up on the receiver and the hitch. And so it makes it very, very difficult to get certain types of loops up there at all. And then even the ones that do go on can be a little difficult. So uh, something to factor in while you're selecting your hitches here is maybe if you are going to be towing, you may want to go with a different option that has a better safety chain loop. Now, I did want to mention on the install, this is a little involved because the rear fascia is coming off the vehicle. We're going to trim a hole in that. If that's something you don't feel like you need to tackle, uh, go ahead and use our dealer locator on the website. That'll help get you a trained professional to throw that hitch on for you. But otherwise, for you DIYers, let's go ahead and hop into that install and walk you through that process. So I started by just throwing up some painter's tape down below our tail light here all along the edge of the body that's going to be staying on. And then, of course, we've got it along the fascia here. Uh, we're going to be coming up to the tail light to get this going. And we'll remove this little bumper. Uh, easiest way to do that is just take a pair of channel locks or vice grips, something like that, and a towel. Get it loose. And then once it's loose, you should be able to just unthread that by hand. And I wanted to mention everything we do on one side, we're just going to be repeating the same process on the other side. Um, so either way, you'll come to our carpeting in the trunk here. Just get that pulled down and out of the way to access two 8 millimeter nuts that are right here. And we'll take both of those loose. And before we pull the tail line out, we'll need to unplug it. There's just a clip here with the little plastic push tab in the center. You'll apply good pressure to that and give it a tug. And with that removed, you'll be able to just put some pressure downwards and out away from the vehicle. And that will pop the tail light out and we'll set that aside. And one thing I wanted to mention about the driver's side is it is easier to have the charging port open when you remove this tail light. And on each side, we're gonna have a 10 millimeter bolt below where the tail light was that we'll remove. Then we've got three poppets underneath uh, that will need to be removed. These are just a two piece, so you'll get under that first part, get it pulled all the way out, and then the whole poppet should come out. Now we're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and come underneath the vehicle on each side. There's gonna be two on the outside here. Then another set of three 10 millimeter bolts in the middle that will need to come out. 
And then these two at the front of the plastic cover here. And then at the rear of the vehicle, there's going to be these two little plastic covers that need to get opened up, exposing the last two 10 millimeters we're going to be taking. And we're coming back to the wheel well liner, and we'll just push that out of the way to access a T25 that's living right here. Now to remove the fascia, we are going to want a second pair of hands. I got my buddy Jake here helping me out. So uh, we'll just grab at the edge back behind the fender liner, apply good pressure to the top, pulling from the bottom, and that should all just snap loose. And then at, towards the top, those just sit on that. So we'll be able to lift and have that away. There's going to be a plug here in the center that we'll need to unplug. So we'll fold the plastic tab and push down on the center, releasing the plug. We're going to set the face off to the side. Now that little plug that we just undid, you'll be able to yank that out of this plastic bracket. And then there's going to be 10 millimeter bolts that hold that on. Um, we're just going to remove all those and then set this into the trunk. Then we'll take a 15 millimeter and remove the nuts that are on the rear of the bumper. There will be three on each side. And we'll remove the rear bumper beam. Now we'll need to remove these bumper supports. There's gonna be four 15 millimeter bolts that hold each of those on. Then with the coating, these plates may be a little stuck, so you can just squeeze a flathead back behind them and they should pop right off. Now we're going to be mounting the bumper beam to the hitch, so we will need to add our white flat washers onto the studs and then use the provided bolt and washer through the back of the hitch. And again, putting on our white plastic washers, we'll do the same on each side. and then hold the bumper beam up to it. And then we're gonna take the hardware that was originally holding on the bumper beam, that's just gonna go right back into place. And then the bolt on the uh, center that we're putting in through the hitch is gonna be a 17 millimeter on that back side. So I'm gonna start with that one just so we can get it done. Easiest way to get that center one started, just hold the bolt with your finger at first and then use the socket to start the nut. And we'll just go hand tight with those for now. And before we put this up, we'll just need to go through and torque that to the specification shown in the instruction manual. Then we got those last four flat washers. We're gonna put those on each side of where the supports were. And we'll put the bumper beam and hitch into place using a single nut just to hold that on. So we'll get that started a few threads on each side. And then we're gonna come through and then torque those all to spec the exact same way we did with the ones that hold on the bumper beam. And we're not doing it on this particular neighbor's vehicle, but if you were to be doing wiring, now would be the best time to do it. Just wanted to make sure I mentioned it because we've got everything open and accessible. Be very easy to run all your wires, so worth noting. So the last thing to do before we put the fascia back on, of course, is gonna be cutting the hole for the hitch to live through. And the instructions are pretty clear as far as how to get the measurements for that using the center hole here and of course uh, the measurements they provide. There are a couple ways of going about getting this hole out. For us, we're gonna be using a multi-tool and cutting it out. You could always use a hole saw and they give you a couple different variations of how to do so in the instructions. 
I'm going to do it with the multi-tool simply because I need to cut this section out and then the neighbor wants to keep that to be able to uh, fashion some type of a cover out of it. So normally you would just do the two hole saws and then cut out the section in between here that you can see where it's not marked out where the holes are. Then you can use either a file or just a razor to clean up those edges. And then we're going to reinstall the fascia. We will need to have the actual shank that sits up in the hitch removed. And we'll just slide that back into place, making sure our tabs and our connections are reattached. We just have the one for the rear sensors. Now we're just going to go through, since the fascia is back on, get our tail lights back in and everything reinstalled in reverse order. And then we'll reinsert the uh, shank back into the hitch, and then we're going to have to torque down that bolt. This will have to be done every time you remove the shank. And that's going to conclude our look at an installation of our Eco Hitch on this 2018 Tesla Model 3. My name's Ian with E-Trailer. Appreciate you watching.